some clean power wash. Um, so this is this is what it's come down to. I have wanted to make this video for uh, basically about four weeks. It's almost the end of June right now. Uh, it's going to be interesting because I, I want to make this a three-part video, um, or a three part one of three, I guess I should really say. Um, so May 2022 hit our first uh, $100,000 month, did 105 and change in it. Um, you know, first $100,000 non Christmas lights month. Um, we did do a $10,000 Christmas light removal, which is pretty crazy um, in that time frame. But um, I'd love to say that we crushed it. Um, we probably, quite frankly, with the uh, workload, with the capacity and everything, we probably could have done about 125. Uh, I ended up only doing about 105. Um, I'm in this group called the BBB, and you know we have to come up with a $10,000 idea, uh, $25,000 collaboration, or a uh, lesson learned. And my lesson learned um, was May. We ended up with 27 callbacks, and things just kept snowballing over and over and over again. Um, it just got out of control. Um, we'd had a little bit of Turn over with the office, replace them with somebody else. Um, we brought on a foreman this year, which I told you guys, you know, this year was all about building that leadership team to be able to free me up, to be able to then, if I had the right people leading the way, um, then they could be able to train the people below them and things would be able to be awesome. Um, realized getting part way through it, uh, we had a foreman who would become very toxic he wasn't helping the situation, all the callbacks. You know, we're on a production pay system, so um, obviously callbacks are bad, no matter what you're doing. Uh, but with production pay, you know, fortunately on the company side, we're not paying you additional money to go out and fix your mistakes um, or to, you know, fixing damaged plants or fixing something that wasn't washed or whatever else. Um, and so many of these callbacks were completely preventable. Um, either by doing a better job, communicating better with the client. Uh, we had a lot of software scheduling. The logistics wasn't handled properly, and so we had everybody going all over the place. And so that, that obviously we didn't set the technicians up for success, so they were rushing. Um, we've been doing a four-day work week, um, which we kind of got to the point where we're like, do we just have to go back to five-day work week? And instead of doing four longer days just go back to five days text were now we, we really like the four days um, so we made it we made it through it uh, realized a lot lots of lessons learned in that process um, we let our office person go we let the foreman go we had demoted him down to a technician he was actually uh, producing below the level of he was getting paid 18 bucks an hour and was producing at about $13 an hour, which is ridiculous. Um, and at the end of the day, it just wasn't a right fit for him, you know, for that position. Um, similar thing with the office, just there were skills and abilities that we thought she had, didn't have them. Uh, we had one guy who had been with us for about a year. Um, he left for a, a new career doing HVAC. Awesome, awesome kid. You know, when he told me about that, the company he was going to go to, and I was like, man, let me reach out. I got contacts at other companies, you know. Uh, and I kind of knew since he was going to school that for HVAC that that was going to eventually happen. Um, so that's how we ended May. Again, we did a lot of work. We, we hit that 100000 um, I banged my head against the wall. <coughs> against the wall a lot. Um was super frustrating a lot of time you know we're, we're just trying to figure out like what in the world are we doing wrong like what are we not doing um, you know going out on job sites and seeing some of the stuff that we we're saying was like are you guys just did you just not get trained did you not pay attention to it and realize that a lot of it um, me and my ops manager had kind of we more or less advocated the the training process to well, we thought we were, you know, strong techs capable of doing it and um, found that they were not doing what we were 
hoping they would do, but B just weren't giving them the kind of training, taking the time, making them understand the what and the why behind why we do certain things certain ways. Um, and it all, you know, fall, all fed into it. Um, so getting back to some basics as far as training, obviously realizing too, like, we needed to take a minute to just, like, let's breathe, let, let's, you know, but we were so in the thick of it that we just, we just didn't feel like we had the time to be able to, to take to make those changes and, you know, I, I've said before, you know, you'll never forget or you'll never regret firing somebody. You'll regret how you fired them or the timing or something else about it. And definitely there were changes that we needed to have made and I should have pulled the trigger sooner. Um, and once I finally did, it made a world of difference for us. But because we didn't do it soon enough, um, that really, really messed us up. So that is the end of uh, number one. So guys, just when you, you know, the whole crushing of the grapes, making wine and whatnot, six figures, it, it exacted a toll. I'll put it plainly. We also had a, uh, I guess it would have been a $17,000 project that uh, got canceled. Um, that's usually like a full week long project, all hands on deck, me there the whole time. That actually got canceled ended up finding out that somebody else got the job later on, but um, ended up actually being a huge blessing to not have to do that job. Um, and so still we're able to get a ton of work in there. We got a lot of commercial stuff coming up in the next couple months that's uh, going to change some stuff for us. So anyways, uh, part one is done.